Why is it that every time you see the best in slot list for any job except Black Mage, it is always, always, always critical hit that is the best stat that you stack as much as feasibly possible of? And more importantly, why is it that speed tends to almost always be a stat that you use in extremely specific and strict amounts except Black Mage and go for no more and no less than specifically that? Compared to other MMOs, like WoW for instance, where some specializations like crit, some like haste, and some like mastery the most, Final Fantasy XIV prioritizes critical hit on basically all jobs, and even Black Mage has competitive sets with a majority of critical hit, despite being capable of being different. Now, there is an obvious reason why critical hit is best, and a less obvious but still good reason for why speed tends to be undesirable in large quantities in Final Fantasy XIV. Let's start with the more obvious one. Critical hit is one of three or four stats that allows you to directly increase the damage of your actions. To best explain how overpowered critical hit is, let's take a glance at the three competitors. Determination flat out increases all damage and healing done and increases it by 0.1% per 13.6 points of determination you have. Extremely simple and easy to work with. Tenacity is a tank exclusive variant of the same stat that additionally also reduces damage taken by the same amount, but only adds 0.1% per 19 points of tenacity. This means that determination is 40% more effective at actually improving your damage output. Direct hit is a stat that grants you a chance to do 25% more damage by doing a direct hit. With no gear or buffs, your chance is always 0%. The chance is increased by 0.1% every 3.5 points of direct hit. This translates to a 0.1% damage increase every 14 points. Because of how stats interact with each other, even if determination is slightly better as you can see, having close to equal amounts of both stats tend to be more effective, with slightly more determination of course. Additionally, note that direct hit never exists on tank or healer gear, and heals cannot direct hit. This is what tends to lead tanks and healers to use Materia to melt direct hit on anything that critical hit does not fit on. Now, critical hit is a bit more complicated. With no gear or buffs, you have a 5% chance to do 40% more damage or healing with a critical hit. Every 9.5 points in critical hit increases both your chance and the damage bonus of a critical hit. That means having 95 critical hit results in a 6% chance to do 41% more damage. That is to say, compared to direct hit, which only boosts the probability, critical hit both increases the chance and the payoff. The way critical hit is supposed to be balanced around this is by having a worse scaling payoff. Critical hit starts off worse than both of the other stats. Notably, from zero critical hit, you need around 29 critical hit to gain 0.1% damage output from it. However, if you have, say, 1400 critical hit, including the base amount, then you need closer to 19 critical hit to gain 0.1% damage output from it. And this only gets better with more critical hit. To be completely clear, relative to the amount of damage you are already doing, only critical hit is capable of getting better with more gear. That is to say, if you already do 10% more damage due to your determination, to increase your actual damage output by 1%, you need 150 more determination, rather than the 136 you needed when you had 0%. In other words, the more determination and direct hit you have, the less valuable the next point is, relatively speaking. However, for each point of critical hit you get, the next point only becomes more valuable. Incidentally, the point where critical hit overtakes determination and direct hit both relies on critical hit's ability to increase in value and determination and direct hit's downside of not doing so. For this reason, if you don't already have a lot of critical hit, it isn't worth it, which is why a build that isn't actively aiming to maximize critical hit tends to prioritize critical hit much lower, since it might be difficult for it to reach the critical mass where it overtakes the competition without being prioritized. Which leads us to the more complicated stat to explain, speed. If you are the type of player to try and optimize your gear, you may know of the fact that most jobs have a very specific amount of speed they like to have. For example, a lot of job rotations fit much better in a perfect loop if you have a certain GCD. Some jobs like to have a specific amount of speed to be able to sneak in extra attacks in the duration of certain buffs. And some jobs like a specific amount of speed because it makes it easier to align specific cooldowns to be used at precise intervals. For the first one, consider that with the base 2.5 GCD, you can fit 24 GCDs in one minute. 
However, if you instead have a GCD of 2.40, you can fit 25 GCDs in one minute. For some jobs, this small difference matters a lot. In fact, Samurai and Monk are prominent examples of jobs that have super specific speed requirements, and they have built-in buffs that increase their speed even further. For the second, Gunbreaker is known to aim for a specific speed amount to fit a 9th GCD in their No Mercy windows. However, the damage gained from doing so turns out to be small enough that in the second raid tier of Endwalker, many Gunbreakers opted for a no speed build to optimize critical hit due to how the tankier options ended up. Paladin also used to be a job that would play with specific amounts of speed to increase the amount of GCDs during fight or flight, but since weapon skills and spells scale off different types of speed, it is simply too costly to do nowadays. For the third, a key benefit of playing with exactly 2.50 GCD is that, and you might need to make sure you are well seated for this one, put down that glass of water. All cooldowns in Final Fantasy XIV have a cooldown that is a multiple of 2.50. That means that if you used, say, Upheaval as a warrior immediately after your Storm's Eye GCD, then you would be able to weave Upheaval again exactly 12 GCDs later, immediately after the 12th GCD without fail. Recall that using any action incurs around half a second of animation lock. That means that upheaval was activated around 0.625 seconds after Storm's Eye. That means upheaval is ready again 30 seconds later, 30.625 seconds after that Storm's Eye. If your GCD is 2.50, then 12 GCDs equate to precisely 30 seconds. However, if your GCD instead was, say, 2.40, then only 28.8 seconds would have passed by 12 GCDs. Furthermore, after that 12th GCD, upheaval would ready right around the late weaving timing rather than the early weaving timing that you used it on originally, so it just barely works out. 30 seconds after that, you will have performed 25 GCDs rather than 24, but here upheaval will actually line up in the early weave again. However, had this been a double weave instead, then the late weave you paired with upheaval would have caused problems 30 seconds in. Incidentally, this is how Paladins run into issues, since they tend to double weave Fight or Flight and Requiescent, and Expiation and Circle of Scorn, which both pairwise would run into trouble here. And that is to say nothing about the confusion of the alternation between the speedier weapon skills and slower spells. Another key problem is that, if we were to look into how much damage gaining speed actually grants us, it becomes very complicated. At a glance, you would gain over 1% damage output if your GCD changed from 2.50 to 2.47, which requires just 132 speed, less than even determination. However, many actions in Final Fantasy XIV are completely unaffected by speed. In fact, there are so few cooldowns that are affected by speed that it might be easier to just list those. Summoners summon Bahamut and Phoenix, however, Searing Light and Energy Drain are not affected. Machinists Drill, Air Anchor and Chainsaw are multiples of the GCD as well. However, as Heat Blast and Auto Crossbow don't scale, anything beyond a small amount of speed is wasteful anyway. Gunbreaker's Gnashing Fang combo, Sonic Break and Double Down also scale with speed. However, Sonic Break and Double Down are preferably used once per No Mercy, once per minute, and Gnashing Fang is used twice per minute, and typically at the very start of the No Mercy window anyway, so the cooldown reduction changes very little, aside from letting you use the actions precisely on cooldown, rather than them being slightly off due to an awkward GCD timer. In other words, the reason why speed is so unappreciated is because most jobs only gain slightly more filler damage and slightly more resources to work with from speed, while all other stats make the cooldowns in your burst do more damage, which tends to matter far more in the grand scheme of things. Now, the first exception to this rule is that healers, due to the severely lacking offensive toolkit they have, often have nearly all of their offensive toolkit scale with speed at least enough of it to warrant stacking some of it in specific situations. Speed also increases the damage of damage over time effects, which is also a significant portion of healer damage. The second exception, and the most notable one, is Black Mage. Black Mage's filler rotation does so much damage that increasing the speed of it tends to be competitive with boosting the damage numbers of their entire toolkit. This is both because of the actual damage output, but also because of Black Mage's unique toolkit. Having more speed allows you to do certain tricks in the rotation, which, in their own right, can boost your damage in other ways. Transpose lines. And the more speed you have, the easier it is to perform these tricks. 
The only damage boosting cooldowns Black Mage has that are technically unaffected by speed are Polyglots and Amplifier, Sharp Cast and Triple and Swift Cast. And simply having more speed can allow you to have more mobility in combat, which frees you up to more easily use all of these tools during bursts if you so desire. In fact, stacking all of your damage cooldowns during a burst results in far less of a damage gain compared to other jobs. Two triple casts and a swift cast may grant you one extra spell during raid cooldowns, and while Xenoglossy is a damage gain, it is less than 300 potency each over just casting Fire 4. And finally, Ley Lines giving you a temporary speed boost means that having more speed allows you to fit more spells during that speed boost, making speed have an opportunity to double dip in value, just like critical hit. Now, I hope you found this interesting and maybe learned something new about stats. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to support me and my channel, you can make sure to let the YouTube algorithm know by liking the video, leaving a comment, subscribing and hitting the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel like these wonderful people here. Fun fact, direct hit might feel like a really weird also crit kind of stat. That is not surprising as direct hit was added to replace hit chance, which used to be a stat. Shockingly, replacing a chance to fail to hit with a chance to hit better was a lot more appreciated by the player base. This also explains why Direct Hit only boosts offensive actions, as hit chance wasn't necessary for support actions either.